A lot of reviewers, myself included, often talk about how a speaker needs more power to sound its best. And I get why this may not only cause confusion, but also frustration. I mean, just try searching for more powerful amplifiers, and you're quickly going to discover that with more power, you have to spend more money. Can the Emotiva XPA HC1, however, buck this trend, and for the vast majority of you, be the last amplifier you'll ever really need? The XPA HC1 is one of Emotiva's new-ish XPA amplifier modules resting in its own smaller chassis. Rated at 300 watts into 8 ohms and 600 watts into 4, the XPA HC1 is a hybrid of sorts. It is a discrete dual differential amp that utilizes a class AB amplifier section mated to a class H power supply for better efficiency while still preserving the sound quality most listeners associate with class AB designs. You can connect it to your stereo preamp, home theater processor, or home theater receiver's preamp outputs using either a balanced or unbalanced connection. Power remains the same regardless of your connection, though you will enjoy a better signal-to-noise ratio when using a balanced connection. Now, the HC1 is an all-black affair with Emotiva's trademark metal rails running top to bottom along the outer edges. All of the indicator lines, which include the large standby power button, glow blue in typical Emotiva fashion, though they can be defeated. While the amp itself has a relatively compact footprint, it's still quite beefy visually, though it's not too heavy at only 21 pounds. Around back, you're going to find a robust pair of binding posts, as well as the amp's balanced and unbalanced inputs, which are selectable via a small toggle switch. Throw in a couple of trigger ports and a removable power cord, and you have the HC1's physical appearance all summed up. Now, setup is pretty straightforward. Because the HC1 is a true monaural amplifier, you're going to need one amp per speaker. So we use two in order to power the new Polk Audio R700 towers. Because I didn't want to do away with, say, modern conveniences like HDMI connectivity, I opted to use the Marantz 8015 AV receiver as a preamp. Now, you can put the 8015 into a strict preamp mode, which I did for this review, as well as running it exclusively in its pure direct mode to further cut down on the possibility for sonic contamination. Now, the first thing I like to do when listening to a truly powerful amplifier is turn the sound down. Stick with me. While an amp with as much juice as the HC1 can no doubt make a speaker shine, the point of power is less about volume and more about control. And I'm talking absolute control. So while it may be tempting to get a powerful amp such as the HC1 and turn everything to 11, that may be missing the larger point. So let's break it down. A good amp is not going to give you more bass, more mid-range, or higher highs. An amplifier cannot inject or create sound out of thin air that isn't already present in the signal can only amplify what it's given. And as a result, if you are experiencing more of something, the amp is simply giving your speakers the requisite tools to perform at their best. Meaning, if you're getting more of any one aspect of a speaker's performance, for example, higher highs or richer bass, it's because the amp is unlocking more of the speaker's inherent potential. So at any volume with a quality amplifier, I'm talking one that isn't introducing distortion, you should be treated to the same amount of detail, intelligibility, tone, and separation. The only thing that should change is the scale. So at lower volumes, I'm talking between 35 and 50 dB, the Emotiva positively sings. I mean, within a few seconds of hitting play, it was obvious what copious amounts of power on tap brings to the performance. Typically, with lower watt or less capable amplifiers, there is this threshold you have to cross before the amp and speaker seem to get on the same page. Sometimes that threshold can be, well, a certain volume level, which for some may be too loud for everyday listening. In my experience, the Polk Reserve speakers have been the type of speaker that require a bit more from an amplifier, even a good one, which is why I have concluded a lot of my remarks about the Reserve series with, make sure you have a good, powerful amp, and the Emotiva fits the bill. At volumes hovering around 50 dB and playing the track Seville off the Mission Impossible 2 soundtrack, I was treated to the same three-dimensional and holographic presentation I know many speakers are capable of when listening back at higher volumes, only I was hearing it in all of its full glory at background listening levels. And when I say full glory, I mean the soundstage was vast and well-appointed with the dancer's footsteps traveling front to back and left to right with 
absolute precision. More impressive still was the fact that the various points of impact were bang on. Sure, if I turned things up, I was treated to a more palpable weight with each heel to toe strike, but with respect to detail and absolute separation, it was 100% present regardless of my volume. And this was true of every track I queued up, whether it was a live track like Tori Amos's Cornflake Girl from Live in Kansas or something a bit harder like Korn's Freak on a Leash. The Emotiva just never failed in allowing the Polk Towers to flex their true skills with respect to conveying the scale, detail, and dynamics of a performance at any volume. Sticking with Freak on a Leash, which admittedly is not the best quality recording, and setting the volume to stun, the Emotiva proved to be unflappable. I could detect zero strain, zero distortion, zero, well, anything. It all scaled as I dialed the volume up and down. Even listening at levels I typically do not enjoy. I'm talking peaks well above the mid-90s. The HC1 never struggled. Hell, to put it in human terms, it was strolling. So if you've made it this far and you're thinking to yourself, well, is the amp warm or cool, bass heavy, lean, or any of the other usual reviewer speak? The Emotiva is none of these things. I do not believe this amp has a sound of its own and between my subjective tests and the amplifier's specs, it would appear that the designers at Emotiva have gone to some length to ensure that this is the case. So no, the amp isn't forward or fatiguing. It isn't warm or chocolatey, nor is it bass rich or worse, bloated. If anything, the Emotiva has given me an even greater appreciation for what the Polk R700 can really do. I struggled with this review because there isn't any overt anything happening because of the Emotiva. Going off the various measurements, assuming you trust Emotiva, they are arguably better than some top tier amps from the likes of Mark Levinson. Honestly, I had to look up the spec sheet of one of my all time favorite amplifiers, the Krell Evo 402E, to find an amplifier that just outright bested the Emotiva. While I certainly don't listen to specs, when faced with sound that is, well, this seemingly transparent to the source, you have to wade into some deeper waters to help illustrate your point. As far as sound goes, there's absolutely nothing that I have found objectionable about the HC1. And while I love the idea of monoblocks, I am reminded why I prefer integrated amplifiers over separate components. With separate amps, I lose more physical and visual space, and I just hate that. I would love to have seen the amps made smaller, perhaps by reconfiguring the module's orientation within the chassis, but I understand that Emotiva is probably configuring them this way for economic reasons, both their own and for their customers' wallets. As I've said in the past, I think Emotiva is due for a style change. Their trademark look has grown a bit stale. Keeping things the same may be another way that they've kept costs down, but at some point, you gotta stop being a tight ass. As far as comparisons go, it cannot be overstated just how much you are getting for your money. I mean, I don't even have to try and find examples of products that will run you much, much more, while providing you with little, if any, appreciable differences apart from maybe, say, build quality and or style. For example, the Parasound Halo JC1 Plus will run you almost $17,000 a pair, and for that, you're getting a bit more power, but that's really it. Because the rest of the amp spec, apart from the amplifier's class, aren't that different. Now, I have not heard the JC1 Plus, but I have spent time with the previous generation and going off memory, which admittedly is short. Nothing jumped out at me during my Emotiva evaluation that made me think, oh, remember the JC1s? Now, looking for a more apples to apples comparison, there is the XTZ Edge A2400, which is admittedly a stereo amp that can be turned into a mono one, producing similar power to that of the Emotiva, though it uses a slightly different Class D amplifier design. Pitted head to head, the XTZ amps definitely had more gain out of the box, which meant I had to turn the Marantz down in order to level match the two for a proper comparison. But once I did that, the XTZ was noisier, exhibiting hiss from the Polk's tweeter that was audible at my listening position during quiet passages. The Emotiva, on the other hand, was stone cold silent. I also felt as if the separation between instruments and the soundstage scale was just a tad more reserved and linear or two-dimensional with the XTZ. Both amps sounded good tonally. The XTZ wasn't leaner or warmer per se, just that the notes and or instruments weren't as clearly defined as they were with the Emotiva. So if it were me, I'd go with the HC1. Considering a pair of XTZs will run you more than a pair of HC1s, the choice is made even easier. 
Now, compared to the best bang for the buck amp that I know of, the Crown XLS Drive Core 2, specifically the 1002, here's where things get interesting. Straight up, a pair of 1002s will run you $770, which is substantially less than the HC1. In their mono configuration, the 1002 churns out 700 watts, which is more than double that of the HC1. In reality, a single 1002 or a 1502 at 499 is a better head-to-head -head in terms of power, but let's focus on the 1002. The 1002, like the XTZ, is noisier, meaning hiss is audible unless you dial back the gain, but even at 12 o'clock, you can still hear it. Now, I can live with that, given how much raw performance you're getting from such a cheap amp, but I understand that hiss can be a deal breaker. But hiss aside, there is very little separating these two products sonically. In fact, they sound more similar than different, which I consider to be a good thing. Now, you're free to disagree with me, but don't forget that the drive core design is so good, even Harman, Crown's parent company, thought to include variations of it in their blue chip products from the likes of Lexicon and Mark Levinson albeit with a more audiophile appropriate price tag. So if I wanted to ball out on a budget, the Crown is still unbeaten. But if you want to ensure that you are getting the better overall amp in terms of things you maybe cannot outright hear or perceive that easily, the Emotiva HC1 is the only other amp this reviewer would consider. Unless, of course, you want to sell me a Krell Evo 402E on the cheap. We don't do a lot of standalone amplifier reviews on this channel because when only evaluating power, it can be hard. Either an amp is doing what it has been designed to do, or it's not. If it's doing anything else, then only you can decide if you like its character, which is kind of a fancy way of saying you like its style of distortion, which is completely fine. As for the XPA HC1, it is a great, honest amplifier that among its audiophile peers is a bona fide bargain and an amp I would, at a minimum, audition before parking more money elsewhere for what could amount to mm, marginal, if any, appreciable gains in sound quality. So that's it. That is now my review of the Emotiva XPA HC1 monoblock, but now it's time to find out what Chris even thought of it. Oh, God. You know these types of products are so hard for me. I mean, mm -hmm. to be honest, I think when it comes, it just comes down to, did it work? Yes or no? Yeah. It did. Okay. That's it. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I mean, really, this review could have been about two minutes. And I'm sure we'll hear hear that, uh, you know, echoed in the comments. But sure. Um, I, I don't know. I still prefer integrated amps over separates. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, I'm, I'm with you there, mm -hmm. but I can see, you know, how in some situations these would come in really handy if you've got a pair yeah. of speakers that just aren't quite cutting it with maybe whatever you have in your system. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I would, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say it would be a great, less expensive way if you have more expensive speakers and you're curious, like, is there more to be wrung out of them rather than throw the baby out with the bathwater? I mean, there is in-home trials with Emotiva and a lot of other brands uh, that make amplifiers as well, but this would be a really kind of inexpensive or more affordable way than buying a whole new system to find out if you are feeding your speakers the absolute best power they need. I mean, speaking of for affordability, yeah. I think that the price point makes it just damn near impossible to ignore them. Mm -hmm. I can't really come up with any reason why you would want to spend more than this. I mean, unless you're just straight up care only about style mm -hmm. and or, you know, maybe you want to support a, a specific brand because, yeah. you know, you're just entrenched in. Yeah. In their story or their e ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of sound quality, I, I mean every word of what I uh, of what I said in this review. I think that you would have to spend ridiculous sums of money um, to get an appreciable difference in, say, sound quality or performance over something like this. And when I say ridiculous sums of money, I mean the JC ones at seventeen grand. Uh, my old Krell Evo four hundred two E was fourteen and a half thousand dollars, or was it sixteen? I don't even remember, but that's insane. Yeah, that's a that's lot insane. of money. Insane. Um, and even when Krell uh, made an amp, I think it was called the 275, Evo 275, same form factor, same kind of long, compact, and they made it um, for people to use for like surround channels when they were starting to expand and get height channels. This was several years ago. Even that amp, uh, which I believe was 275 watts per channel, so a little bit less than this one, was like... 
affordable for Krell, but it was like six grand each. Six grand, you know? And it's like, I don't believe that that amp, when new, was better than this. And I had it. I don't believe that it was better. Now, again, I'm going off memory, but yeah. I just, you have to really, really want to spend the money, I think, to walk away and be like, that other amp is better. This Maybe this will help people understand where something like this is going to fit best in their system Mm -hmm. or when do you really need to start looking for a separate amplifier Mm -hmm. i do can you talk about that a little bit because even i mean i know you say well you need more power Mm -hmm. which is a kind of an open-ended statement like what does that really mean the way that i look at it and apologies to any uh electrical engineers out there in our comments who are like well he's kind of (laughs) right think of an amplifier like torque on a car, not horsepower, torque. And when you have a car that is low in torque and you're driving along and maybe you're going 30 and you suddenly need to get to 60 um, and you step on the gas and the car doesn't go anywhere because it has low torque. It doesn't have that pull. And so if you're in a manual car, sometimes you have to like shift down. If you're in an automatic, you got to hope it finds the right gear, but ultimately it comes down to torque. A powerful amplifier, and I'll just keep the example on the HC1 here, has kind of torque throughout the rev range. So whether you're going straight off the line or you're already at 75 miles an hour and you're trying to get to 100, the power's there. You know what I mean? It's like you've got it in reserve. And the problem is is that 95% of the time that you're listening to music or watching movies, more so with music, amps, I don't care what they're made of, how much power they have, they are limping along. They really are. At any given time, you're probably only using about 20, 25 watts of power max. However, when a musical passage gets complicated or it gets dynamic, let's say all of the flutes in a symphony are playing really loud and then suddenly here come the timpanis and they just crash and the volume level of what you're listening to goes from 60 dB 290 in an instant. Well, you need torque. You need power. You need that on tap. And when you only have 50 watts, even though 25, you're limping along just fine, you can cause an amp to clip, bottom out, uh, distort, break. You know what I mean? And when that happens, all of that power, when the amplifier does that, is sent to your speakers. And that can cause your speaker drivers to burn out, break, or, you know, blow your speakers. And so more power, even if you have efficient speakers, can protect this from happening, protect you, your investment, your system from this happening to it. Not to mention just when you're listening, you don't want those crescendos to be full of distortion. You don't want those points of impact to sound gritty, grainy, warbly, messy. You want them to be clean and pristine. And that's where more power comes in. Now, if you have, say, a a Klipsch Heritage speaker that's like 102 dB at one watt and one meter, having a 25 watt amplifier, a 50 watt amplifier is kind of like having a 300 watt monoblock because it's just, it's so efficient with how it it applies the power or how it can accept the power. Um, But for 90% of the mass market speakers out there on the market, um, more power is typically always kind of a good thing. Awesome explanation. I think that's really going to help people. I hope so. I hope so. Um, I feel like I've made a video about that way, way back. Maybe it's time to revisit it. But yeah, um, that's how I look at it. And that's kind of how I know a lot of other people look at it. Awesome. Well, I think we've, I think we've covered it. Okay. Any, anything else? Any last words? Nah. No? No, oh. I, I think, I think we're good. Okay. <laughs> So that's it for us today. That is now our review of the Emotiva XPA HC1 Mono Amplifier. What did you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, my question of the day for you is this, pretty simple, and that is, what camp are you in? Are you separates all the way, or do you prefer the simplicity of an integrated amplifier? Let me know. I am curious. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. Uh, If you use any of the links that Christy leaves for you down below, you give us a thanks or you become a member of this channel. Know that all of those ways help to support this channel. And Christy and I thank you very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile. And that is it for us today. So remember, 
The only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.